in a day and age where some think sleep is for the lazy, it's time we rethink this again. Sleep is probably one of the most important aspects of your health. So why is it so hard for some, and maybe a little too easy for others, to sleep the correct amount and make it a priority? Well, just like any healthy habit, learning the why behind it sometimes gives us a better chance of prioritizing it. Let's talk about sleep cycles and why they matter. During sleep, our bodies are able to do the majority of the repair we need to keep us going each day. This repair is important for not only weight loss and maintaining muscle mass, but also for brain health as well. There are four main stages of sleep that are needed each night to fully restore your body for the next day. These stages make up something called an REM cycle. More and more, we are learning that it is critical we go through all these stages of sleep in a night, three to five times to allow our bodies the best rest. The four stages are number one, falling asleep. This is the time where your body transitions into sleep and feels as if you are dozing off. It lasts about five to 10 minutes. Number two, light sleep. Body temp drops, heart rate slows. This is where our bodies prepare ourselves for the next level of restorative sleep. This is also considered the best time to wake up since you won't feel as groggy if you wake up in the morning in this stage of sleep. This stage lasts about 25 minutes. Our third stage is that deep sleep. Deep sleep is where recovery primarily occurs. Deep sleep is recognized as one of the most important phases of sleep and lasts 20 to 40 minutes per cycle. And our fourth stage is REM sleep or rapid eye movement. REM sleep starts around 10 minutes and increases duration during each sleep cycle up to an hour. This is where our dreams occur and our brains activate. It takes around 90 minutes to reach your first sleep cycle and getting three to five of these each night is what we're aiming for. But how do I know if I'm even getting the right amount of sleep? You know, it's hard enough to get my body to not only fall asleep, but stay asleep. And now I have to worry about whether they're going through all the proper stages. There are a few telltale signs that you are sleep deprived and we are going to show you the steps to take to get to the best sleep possible. There is more than one way to tell if you're getting enough sleep, but most of us inherently know the answer. But just in case, go through this checklist and note whether or not you do these or feel this way on a daily basis. We will always have time where we have a late night out and know we didn't get the sleep we needed. But our goal here is to focus on long-term sleep habits and if they are being prioritized the way we need. Okay, here we go. Do you feel like every time you sit down or take a break, you could fall asleep? Is it hard for you to concentrate, even on a topic you enjoy? Are you forgetting things more often? How's your mood? Are you calm in stressful situations or feel like you have more of a temper? Are you unmotivated doing things that you normally love? Do you feel tired all day long and catch yourself constantly yawning? So maybe one or two of these are you, or maybe all of them. The first step is awareness. Constantly living in a state of sleep deprivation not only affects your days, but it can also have a long-term effect on your overall health. There are findings that lack of sleep can lead to health issues ranging from diabetes, depression, heart disease, and obesity. Getting our proper sleep is so important. So how are we gonna do it? There are two steps that we're gonna focus on today for this, proper nutrition, and sleep hygiene. When sleeping for a healthier lifestyle, it's also best to eat for a healthier lifestyle. Not only are the foods we eat important, but the time in which we eat them is important as well. Especially when fasting windows are in their earlier parts of the day, have been shown to promote better sleep since they better match our body's circadian rhythm. So I know I should eat earlier in the day, but what kinds of foods should I eat and possibly avoid? One of the biggest culprits of sleep loss could be the overconsumption of high sugar foods and caffeine. See, sugar raises our blood glucose levels quickly, causing a burst of energy and then an energy crash, which can disrupt sleep cycles. Caffeine is a stimulant not only for your body, but also for your brain. Caffeine is shown to decrease your quality of sleep and aiming to have your last dose of caffeine at least six hours before bed is advised. So I'm going to avoid the simple sugars and the caffeine prior to bed. 
but what should I eat? If you're going to follow the guidelines we've been giving you in your nutritional profile, then you're probably eating the right things. Focusing on eating whole foods throughout the day will help your body regulate its sleep and wake cycles. Our primary focus should be on lean proteins in each of our meals, complex carbs, healthy fats, and a ton of veggies. It's best to consume your meals in the earlier part of the day so your body doesn't have to focus on digestion overnight. But what if you are hungry and need to grab a snack closer to bed? Try having a cup of chamomile or peppermint tea if you think this hunger could be more of a late night snacking habit. If it's not, have some cottage cheese with blueberries and a sprinkle of cinnamon, or two hard boiled eggs with a piece of whole grain toast. The goal is to not deprive yourself when hungry but to give it the foods that will sustain your body while giving you the best night's sleep possible. Now for the next step, we move on to our sleep environment and hygiene. Setting up your routine and space for proper sleep can sometimes be the deciding factor on whether or not you get the most out of each sleep cycle. Let's start with your bedtime. Do you have a consistent one? Having a consistent bedtime is one of the best ways to improve the quality of our sleep and decrease the time it takes to fall asleep. We want our bodies to get on a schedule. The same here goes on for waking up. Allowing your body to have a consistent bedtime and wake up time sets it up for a solid rhythm. Make sure you are stimulated during your daily routine. Are you getting outside? Are you exercising? Stimulating our bodies during the day promotes falling asleep faster and staying asleep each night. And now aim to wind down about an hour before bed. Start dimming those lights in your house and cut back on screen time. Read a book, listen to music, do something that relaxes rather than stimulates you. And lastly, change up your environment if it needs it. Make sure your room is on the cooler side so your body doesn't overheat and make sure there is no light or sound. Is your bedding and bed itself comfortable? We all need to sleep, and we all need to sleep well. So focus on your nutrition, routines, habits, and having your bedroom set up for the best possible sleep each night.